What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and I'm back at it to bring you some 40 facts and a showcasing on my Grey Knight Army. This time I will be talking about my own personal Grey Knights that I've got commissioned up and they are ready to hit the battlefield hard. Um, I really like this army, it's very, how do I put it, it's very elite. Not a lot of models on the field, but a lot of them can dish out a lot of pain, or at least they used to. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm going to be going through each model that I have, and I will be giving you a brief description of what they do and whatnot. So without further ado, here is my showcase and facts on the Sound Alchemist Grey Knights. It is raining outside, so bear with me if you hear that storm. But anyway, let's continue with the Grey Knight Brotherhood. A Grey Knight Brotherhood is one of the most formidable fighting formations in the galaxy. Under the command of its Grand Master and Brother Captain, it comprises over a hundred elite warriors of the Emperor, each one armed and armored with the finest war gear available to the Imperium. Even more impressive than the firepower, an assembled Brotherhood can muster its prodigious psychic might. Each and every Grey Knight a powerful psyker able to merge his will with that of his brothers to crush anything that stands in their way. It is rare that the Grey Knights will assemble an entire Brotherhood, and only in times of direst need does the Grand Master call upon the combined strength of his warriors. However, when the Brotherhood gathers, it is a fearsome and glorious sight to behold. The air practically hums with barely contained energy as the combined wills of over a hundred Grey Knights gather in one place, the very warp responding to their presence. Here we have the almighty, supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights, Kaldor Drago. Drago stands as the supreme Grand Master in the closing century of the 31st millennia. Drago's deeds have become legend within the chapter, and under his leadership the Grey Knights have won many great victories against the Dark Gods and their minions. However, this glory has singled the Supreme Grand Master out for the attention of the ruinous powers. Demon Lords circle like sharks eager to feast upon Keldor Drago's soul. The grudge that was to come during the Dark Fruition in the final year of the 31st millennium when the Demon Prince Makar dragged him into the warp. Thought that Drago vanquished with Makar, he found himself trapped within the warp, unable to return to his chapter. Since that day, the Supreme Grandmaster has wandered the tides of the Immaterium, no demon or god strong enough to defeat him. From time to time, the ebb and flow of the warp will return him to a point in time where the veil between the two realms wears thins. In these moments, he fights again alongside his brothers, before the warp claims him once more. The Grey Knight Librarian All Grey Knights have some measure of psychic talent, but few Battle Brothers exercise it with free reign. For most, careful training and supervision allows them to focus their abilities in concert with those of their Battle Brothers, and even then along specific lines only. The use of Nemesis Force weapons and of the psychic powers particular to the squad in which they serve. However, those who prove to have a strong strength of mind, far greater than that of their fellows, will go on to join the ranks of the chapter's librarians. Grey Knight librarians have a will of iron. They must, for their sorceries that they wield, are far more powerful than those of their battle brothers, and thus shine indefinitely brighter in the warp. To show the slightest wavering, the most momentary of weakness, is to offer oneself to the otherworldly predators and to eternal damnation. On the battlefield, librarians use their incredible powers to support their battle brothers. This often manifests in a display of raw psychic might, such as a rolling vortex or bolts of eldric lightning. The Grey Knight Strike Squad often forms the vanguard of a Grey Knight Strike Force. On the onset of battle, a Grey Knight commander will invariably task one or more strike squads with the capture of vital locations and key objectives, deploying them via fixed teleporter to ensure a swift seizure of isolated or inaccessible locations. Once in place, a strike squad can lay down a punishing stream of storm bolter and side cannon fire in support of the main assault. Strike wads are, as a result of the battlefield role, used to holding out until reinforcements can be mustered or a beachhead established. 
Theirs is often the task of clearing the way for heavier troops or full-scale landings, slipping past enemy defenses when the Grand Master prefers greater mobility and a lighter touch than the sledgehammer of a Terminator Assault. The Terminator Squad Nothing speaks so clearly of the Grey Knight's status as an elite elite among the Terminator squads that form the heart of their armies. Most Space Marine chapters, be they a fresh founding or a fragment of the First Legions, can count themselves lucky to own perhaps a few score of Terminator armor in which to outfit their first company. The Grey Knights, on the other hand, can muster enough tactical dreadnought armor to outfit almost their entire chapter. Yet formidable though the armor is, the warrior within is far more remarkable. To pursue the endless war against the demons of chaos takes more than a mere space marine. It takes a grey knight, a dedicated warrior who is far above other space marines, as the space marines are above the common run of humanity. The Dreadnought in dark times, the master armorers of the Grey Knights descend into the Chamber of Heroes and awaken the chapter's dreadnoughts. There are a few more awesome sights than a dreadnought in full fury. More than twice that of a man, armed with the most fearsome weaponry, the ground shakes with every step it takes. As the dreadnought advances, enemies scatter before it, their fire ricocheting off its adamantium hide. Dreadnoughts are awoken only in the direst of needs, as the Grand Masters know that to depend too heavily upon these ancient heroes is to dishonor the gift of their service. And now on to everybody's favorite, whether it's the favorite model that they hate, or their favorite model that they love to field, a nemesis Dreadnought is always a sight to see on the battlefield. A Dreadnought is a marvel of technology. It is an adamantium alloy skeleton whose great limbs are given life by a compact but powerful plasma reactor. Over this are layered a series of bonded ceramite plates and armored control linkages. Once a Grey Knight is strapped into the command harness on the Dreadnought's front, synaptic implants give him complete control over the machine's limbs and weapon systems, essentially transforming himself into a metal giant. When a Grey Knight is linked with the Nemesis Dreadnought's devastating weapon systems and protected by its formidable force field, it serves to elevate the Battle Brother's combat abilities to a point where he can withstand the blows of even the mightiest of greater demons and unleash a fearsome counterattack in reply. The Imperium of Man is a realm engulfed in darkness and war, beset by armies beyond counting. Against these threats stand the armies of humanity, superhuman space marines of the Adeptus Astartes, the sprawling armies of the Astra Militarum, and the god machines of the Titan Legions, an array of might that no mortal race can match. Yet there is one foe against which even these formidable forces cannot stand alone. A threat whose peril is rooted in corruption and carnage. To stand against the demons of the warp calls for an army so pure of purpose as to be utterly beyond temptation. In all of the Imperium there is but one such force. An ancient order of warriors forged in humanity's darkest hour. The Grey Knights are the Emperor's final gift to mankind. An entire chapter of psychic space marines dedicated to defending humanity from the demons of chaos. As humanity's only true defense against the creatures of the warp, they possess the finest of skills and rarest war gear available, allied with a strength of purpose unmatched by any other force. They are the weapons of the Emperor. They are the Grey Knights. And there you go guys, that was my army and a brief overview as to each tactical unit in this army as well as a little bit of background lore on the Grey Knights. If you guys want more lore, we've got a bunch of Grey Knight videos. I will put some at the end of the video so you guys can click on it and learn some more about them. Also guys, let me know who do you prefer, Grey Knights or the Adeptus Custodes because in my opinion, they're pretty close to each other. They're both elite units that are made by the Emperor, essentially. I know the Grey Knights are rumored to be basically made from the Emperor's genes, or gene seed, um, but the Adeptus Astartes are supposed to be way better than the Space Marines. So are they equal? Are the Custodes better? Are the, are the Grey Knights better? Let me know what you guys think. 
Also, let me know what else should I add to this army so I could expand upon them. Yes, it's very small, but it is a tight, compact, elite force of Grey Knights, and I like it that way. Thanks, guys. At the end of the video, I will also leave links to my The Sound Alchemist personal armies. I've got the Celestial Suns and my Space Marines. Uh, sorry, and my Tau on there. So all that's left is Gersh, because we want to see your armies, Gersh. Come on, get her done. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got for you guys. Uh, don't forget to hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook for more 40k content. And as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out. Oh, <laughs>